Welcome back to the RT Clinic, everyone. Today's video, I'm gonna show a product that I've kind of wanted to do a video on for a while. It is the Boost Oxygen Tank. So as clinicians, we really need to know what this is all about. So is it the same as giving oxygen out of the wall? Is it room air? Is it pressurized room air? We're gonna look a little deeper into it. Roll the intro. So I picked up a couple of these Boost Oxygen. These are medium sized tanks and it delivers right here as it says up to uh, 100 one second inhalations of 95% pure oxygen. So you know me as a respiratory therapist, we're gonna analyze this to see if it is 95%. Also, is it any more than 21%? I don't know. So it also is a pressurized can and I was thinking, okay, well, if you're gonna pressurize it, what's it pressurized at? Uh, really cool, we look at some numbers on here. Right there in that bottom part says 32 bars. If you wanna convert that over to an oxygen tank, we know we have our oxygen tanks and they're, they're mainly made of steel in most cases, but you know we get them to 2,000 to 2,200 PSI. This is, if we can convert 32 bar to PSI, it's about 464 PSI. So kind of the bottom end, maybe a quarter left in your oxygen tank, that's the amount of pressure in this. It's still pressurized pretty well. Uh, a couple other cool things about it, it has like a little mouth cup piece here that kind of goes on. And I watched some videos from the, from the maker, from the inventor of it actually, to uh, kind of see how to use it. And it's used, uh, as it says here, uh, aerobic performance, uh, recharge, and recover and then altitude and poor air quality. So really does it deliver oxygen? I don't know, let's run the analyzer and take a look. All right, so now we're gonna test the percentage of oxygen in here. I'm gonna take a regular medical glove, tie off the fingers just to keep, kind of create the, decrease a little bit of dead space here. All right, oxygen analyzer, you can see we're reading 20.4, somewhere in that area. We're gonna put it inside here. Open up the boost, fresh out of the package. I wanna put it in here. Try to seal up as close as I can around it here. Let's see. And there and here we go let's watch it there it goes 670 83 or so, that's about it, without running the entire tank out. So 83% FiO2 coming out of this. It does say here 95, delivers up to 90% of all the oxygen, with a minus, oh, 95% pure aviator breathing oxygen. So that's a little bit of thing about it. So let's look at some more things. So it kind of looks like it does actually have oxygen in it now. What in the heck is it says on here? It doesn't say anything, it, you know, average oxygen level is 21%, but it does say on here, and the one question that I had at the top, this is five liters of 95% pure aviators breathing oxygen. So look at that a little bit. That's the oxygen available for pilots, you know, that they, that they may need during flight. The really cool thing about this and a lot of you will say, well, how can they give oxygen? Oxygen prescription, right? You know, you have to have an order to give a patient oxygen, and oxygen is a drug, as we've said on here before. But they kind of get away with it because medical oxygen is 
99.99 plus percent pure. This aviator's oxygen is allowed to be a lower percentage of purity, and in that case, it's not FDA regulated. So this does deliver oxygen. And as you can see, uh, 83, 84% with the best of my measuring tools that I can do using the stuff I have at the hospital and in the simulation center. So I think that this is really kind of a cool um, device. But then I'm wondering, you know, what is it going to do for somebody just to take one inhalation of oxygen, try to hold it in like we would might teach our patients with an incentive spirometer? Is it going to do anything for their lungs? So obviously one breath of 80 some percent oxygen, you know, could increase your saturation. But I think it might be something even a little bit different because when this comes out, it's slightly pressurized. And so I wonder if it's encouraging the people who use it to take deeper breaths or take a large breath and recruit alveoli. Because we know that if we recruit alveoli, we're gonna help oxygenation increase the surface area for oxygen to diffuse from the lungs to the blood and in those cases yeah if you're at a high altitude and you have a lower percentage of available oxygen as we've done before you're going to find out that you know you have less available less in the blood and you might get feeling some effects from it and your body makes up for that become by becoming polycythemic so after a couple days you start feeling okay because our bodies are super awesome that way and they're able to do that but my question was does this actually help to recruit alveoli? So I want to use this can. I'm going to do a couple spirometry on my couple spirometry runs on myself to see if there's anything different. Now, now basic spirometry. Are we going to see a big difference in my FVC? Well, I'm going to do three pre and then take just hammer this thing down. A lot of extra oxygen, and then I'm going to do three posts and see if that affects lung function at all in myself, which I think I have pretty much normal lung function for somebody being male, my height and my age. So let's uh, take a look at that and we'll do that spirometry. All right, let's do an FVC. Oh, we better go back. We are gonna say, that sounds pretty close. That's not my Let's go. Let's do three good ones. I know I don't have nose clips on. It's like one of those things I, you know, be an RPFT, I should know better. But we're gonna do this, see if it changes at all. Let's do some pre-FVCs. <sighs> Woo! That's fun. All right. See what our readings are. Uh, I'm just going to look at my percent of predicted FEV, FEC, FEV1. Um, so it shouldn't really affect FEV1 at all. But FEC, it, pro it might be able to, so I'm at 99% right now. So not too bad. 99%. All right, let's do a couple more. Next, we'll take the best one of these and then I'm gonna see what we can do. 98%, one more. All right, shout out to the spirometry video if you didn't get to see that. Spirometry is not like the most like amazing of things like super exciting intubating patients cpr bag my acls all this really fun stuff running events but it's really good to know about it 98 percent. so can i beat 98 percent? well i mean this is you know we'll see so let's go with this so i don't know how it changed my fbc it could have recruited my vli possibly but we'll see all right let's go for it uh, i've used probably half of this so Put it on like this. 
It's kind of cool. You can actually hear the pressure coming out when it does kind of shoot out. That's probably going to be really loud in the mic. So if it was a true, like, blind study, I would just take big, deep breaths instead of just doing this type of thing, <laughs> using this. But we're not, this is not super official, but we're going to do it anyway. Ooh, one question to kind of think about with this. What is the possibility of oxygen to toxicity? So having high levels of PaO2, it's going to be temporarily, right? Because it's going to go in, it's going to diffuse. But high levels of PaO2 um, in your body for maybe you use these a lot, could it cause free radicals? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, usually we're going to see over long periods of time, but it's something to think about with giving extra oxygen. Also, bleomycin poisoning. I remember that from somewhere in back in the annals of respiratory school. I have yet to find out what bleomycin is. So. This thing is like a, I would say, kind of a very, very small version of an easy path. That's what it kind of feels like to me. It's not a lot of pressure coming in, but it does kind of encourage you to take that deep breath. It's like a one-time shot of an easy path. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. And you could do, maybe you could do this without even using oxygen. Maybe you could do it with just using a pressurized air with uh, this is patented though, so I don't think you could take that, but a different type of mask. So those are big breaths. So one second is pretty quick. I like to have a longer I time and about similar E times on my ID ratio. So it's interesting. If you're really fancy when you do it, you put your pinky in the air like this. So when you do it, your pinky's in the air. I mean, it's just what you drink tea that way. So we gotta be getting close. Plus, some of my CO2 is gonna start going down. Come take some big breaths. Start getting lightheaded, tingling the fingers. It's really cool because it uh, it is very very light. So it is extremely light, and they actually put a thing on the package that says uh, oxygen is weightless, molecular, well, you don't really count the molecular weight, but it is weightless, so just because it feels like it's empty, it's not liquid or anything like that, so it's kind of funny. This is aluminum, though, so that does make quite a bit of difference in weight. It makes it pretty much a lot lighter than you would see with an oxygen tank, but oxygen tanks, hydrostatic tested at 2200 PSI in most cases, so that's kind of a different story. Oh, I feel like I'm tapping it out. Okay. One more. Okay. Unscientific. But let's see if we recruited any alveoli with that extra little boost of pressure and the forceful deep breathing that I did. So back to the spirometer. All right, it keeps the same settings in, which is really nice. So we're gonna go back, let me verify that real quick. Yes, let's go back. Cool, we're gonna go back. We have our spirometry, FBC. All right, here we go. I don't know, I can't really tell, feel if I had more, but we'll see. And granted, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna like sandbag on the first couple of breaths and then do them, do really hard ones now because I want to, I want a true reading, so because I want to know as much as you want to know. Hundred nine percent. Okay, well, I didn't really expect it to go up that much. So as you can see, one hundred nine percent of my FVC. Ooh, so you, let's do a couple more. 
percentages aren't huge, but we'll look at it. Okay, full breath out. I should look at my FEV1 too. I think those are wrong. So FEV1 is about it's 100%. FVC is 107, so I'm not sure what we can say about this now. So there's two of them. Let's see if there's going to be another one high. Um, then we probably could attribute some of this to recruiting alveoli with the force file capacity being a little bit higher. I don't live a total sedentary lifestyle, but I mean, I've been behind a desk all day, so there you go. And I, and I really mean, I wasn't saying back in all those first few breaths prior to my boost oxygen. Last one, is it gonna be high? 105, I'm losing it already. <laughs> I don't know, but there is some bit of difference there. Uh, not significant, I don't think it's statistically significant, but it's interesting enough that after taking some breaths from this, and I was kind of taking big ones, but I did recruit some alveoli, so I have more of a force vital capacity. We know that's a volume inside of your lungs. So it's kind of cool to see that. I mean, we can read it with a spirometer. So kind of interesting. Um, you know, they make these in large ones and small ones. I don't think that this would work if, you know, you're, you have COPD and you're on oxygen. It's not gonna, I don't think it's gonna do a lot to give yourself a boost of oxygen because we know it's just gonna be very temporary, but I, I could see the uh, allure in it um, if you were de-recruited or, you know, maybe you, you were at those high elevations. So medically, not really a whole lot you can do, but um, a cool product in itself. Uh, it actually is oxygen, but just not 100% oxygen. We measured about 84% or so. So, hey, I hope that uh, you like the video so you'll know a little bit more about these boost oxygen tanks. This one was a medium size and it kind of went fast for the size of breasts I was taking. So, and you can hear it's really pretty much cashed out now. So they go really quickly. Uh, plus something this big doesn't fit in your pocket quite as well. Um, hey, if you're gonna carry something this big around, you should just carry a spacer for your MDI because nobody uses spacers and they should be using spacers. So if you're gonna carry this around, it's much more effective to carry a spacer for your MDI in your pocket so that if you're using your albuterol, or whatever medication you're using, your long-acting bronchodilator, your inhaled corticosteroid, so you can get more of it where it needs to go. So, you know, this isn't this isn't taking the place of the inhaler by any stretch of the imagination, or should it ever. But kind of a cool product anyway, and it's kind of neat to see uh, that it actually analyzes some oxygen out. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.